So today, <laughs> we're going to talk about the Reformation, give you a brief introduction before you come to class, and here we go. The first thing we need to know is why was the Re Reformation necessary? And that was because there were some problems in the Catholic Church, which we have, by we I mean I, have reduced to these four categories. First we have simony. Simony, despite its weird name, is a pretty simple concept. It's auctioning off the jobs in the church. So when they needed someone like a new bishop in a particular city or a new cardinal someplace, the Pope would just put it up like on a Renaissance eBay and whoever offered the most got the job, right? The next was absenteeism. Absenteeism, which students are very familiar with, was when a bishop or a church ruler, church leader, um, was not at his job, just like it sounds like. And the reason that was a problem was because you had, with simony, people buying multiple jobs. So you might be the bishop in one place and the archbishop in another place, and you lived in a third place where you were the cardinal. Right? So you could get, because you got lots of money from those jobs, and so people would buy as many as they could. Right? Thirdly, you had clerical ignorance and corruption. This usually wasn't a problem with the higher-ups, like the popes and the cardinals and people like this. This was local, um, the everyday priests that people interacted with, and a lot of them couldn't speak Latin, even though they were supposed to perform the services in Latin. Uh, and it also meant they couldn't read the Bible, since the Bible was written in Latin, so they were uh, pretty ignorant of what all the things they were supposed to know. Corruption, that took really um, a lot of forms, but the two most common forms would be one, uh, taking a pretty hefty cut whenever you were supposed to perform one of your duties as a priest. So if you were going to sit there and baptize a baby, you know, pay up. And the other one, of course, was they had taken a vow of celibacy, and people uh, didn't believe it since a lot of the priests had children and women living with them, and that kind of was a hint that maybe they were not completely celibate. Indulgences uh, were simple. This was something that had always been around. You could um, buy an indulgence, and that would pay for prayers, masses, and things like that for the souls of the dead. Why did you need to pay the church to pray or say a mass for someone who died? In order to understand that, we need to understand what people thought happened after you died in the Middle Ages. So, they believed that a very few people went straight to heaven. <laughs> There's our heavenly choir there, which sounded more like they were among the people who went straight to hell. Like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right. So hell, you know, that's so that my neighborhood. They believe most people went to purgatory. This is this kind of in-between place, right? You know, very few people were so good that they go straight to heaven. Most people, you know, they did a few things they weren't particularly proud of, but if you were like me, you Almost everything was something you weren't proud of. You would go and they, well, you know, you'd have to pay for your sins before you could go to heaven. And so, the longer you, the more sins you had to pay for, the longer you had to spend in purgatory. But you could shorten it. You could get the saints to help you out. Right? So by prayers and masses, that would shorten the time. So, you could do this for, you know, people you cared about, people in your family. Grandma dies, she used to bake you cookies, and so you want grandma to go to heaven faster. You need indulgences. That brings us to Johann Tetzel, who after a career of selling indulgences, <laughs> moved on to selling Tetzel's pretzels. He didn't, but our art department, <laughs> our art department spent weeks trying to draw <laughs> this sad pretzel. Johann Tetzel was assigned by the church to sell indulgences. The church was selling a lot of indulgences at the time because the Reformation overlaps with the Renaissance. And the Pope was busy building St. Peter's Basilica, which was mighty pricey. They were also hiring a lot of Renaissance artists, etc. That cost a lot of money. So there was pressure on Tetzel and others like him to sell, sell, sell. At first, all was good. They were selling indulgences along the usual lines, you know, sell this, and, you know, buy this, and we will say a prayer for grandma. Eventually, the pressure gets to them, and they start to exaggerate what an indulgence could do. And they made it sound like basically a ticket to heaven. Buy this, and you go straight up to heaven. They had a nice little rhyme. When the money in the coffer rings, your soul up to heaven springs, or something along those lines. Which brings us to Martin Luther and his 95 theses rhymes with feces. Martin Luther was a priest and a college professor 
in Germany, and he was very upset by what Johann Tetzel and others like him were doing. He thought that Tetzel was abusing the ignorance of regular people, and he wanted to make a change. So, how do you do that? In those days, what he did is he made a list of all the problems that he saw in the church, not just the indulgences, although that was the main one, that was the cause that was really kind of bothering him, but as he thought about it, he listed other problems he saw with the church. And he went to the cathedral door, and on Halloween day, October 31st, 1517, he posted his 95 Theses. The story is that he hammered it to the door, which issued a challenge, you know, I'd like to debate this topic or talk about this topic. Some people question whether he actually did that, but Halloween is a good story. So he goes and does this, and it's important to note that Martin Luther is not looking to break away from the Catholic Church. He's not looking to start anything uh, new in terms of religion. He wants to fix the problems in the church, and he is hoping that the local church leaders will address the problem with them, and they can start a conversation and a discussion, how can we fix things? It didn't quite work out.